in B flat. Walked away from the Lord My sins grew many My heart grew cold Fellowship was broken I felt so all alone But it didn't matter How far I'd gone God was still faithful And I came back home My sins were forgiven And His grace to me was shown So I stand here before you tonight rejoicing everything's all right cause in my heart i know that i am saved oh and how i long to do god's will oh i admit that i fail him still but i'm so glad that his grace never will
appreciate the Lord, appreciate the good singing so far. Uh, as they play tonight, let's all take a time of fellowship one with another tonight. Faith and Miss Dixie's going to come sing one tonight. Before they come, I want to make mention, uh, Miss Alexa, uh, they thought that she was going to go into labor this afternoon, but it was just a, uh, well, it's better to be proactive, uh, so, and that's what they was doing, uh, but I tell you, that, that baby could be here uh, in any time, so let's just pray for them. Uh, she's at home, just relaxing, and uh, so let's pray for them tonight and let's always remember brother Mike and there's a lot to pray for tonight uh, so and let's pray for the ones that aren't here yes bless her heart yes ma'am absolutely all right well y'all worship with them tonight uh, looking forward to this I'll just worship with them. Amen. Bless the Lord. I never got over, but I am not under the bondage of sin anymore. I'm still amazed that Jesus would pay a debt I could not afford. I never got past that I'm free at last from the sins that made me a slave. I still feel as much as when he first touched me oh yes i'm still amazed i'm amazed to know how far god would go to set a lost man free and i've seen Yeah. 
pearls instead of the streets of your gold. He's the only king who gave everything in exchange for a bold or grave. But I still love to ponder this God given wonder. put this on it, but I feel like I'm, I'm known for singing this song, so we're going to sing it. <clears throat> David sang the praises of the glory of Jehovah. Paul preached that all is lost save knowing Christ. Little John said he is precious by leaning on his bosom. So for a moment, may I humbly testify. Did I mention that I love him? How I worship and adore him When I can see no way He's made a way And did I mention He's been faithful To every promise He's ever made me I love him that's all I want to say. And how many sermons can be preached about this Jesus? How many songs can be sung about God's Son? There'll never be enough. There are not enough words, enough notes in the music to tell the story of all my Savior has done. This suits me. Did I mention that I love him? How I worship and adore Him When I can see no way He makes a way And did I mention He's been faithful To every promise He's ever made me I love Him that's all I want to say. And did I mention that I love him? Church, I love him tonight. And how I worship and adore him when I can see no way he makes a way. And did I mention he's 
He's been faithful to every promise He's ever made me. I love Him. That's all I want to say. I'm going to sing it one more time without no music. But if He's made a way for you recently, why don't you just go ahead and just sing with us? Did I mention that I love Him? How I worship and adore Him when I can see no way. He's making a way. Thank God, yes. And did I mention He's been faithful to every promise He's ever made me. I love him, that's all I want to say. Amen. I sure do love the Lord tonight. I thank him for his goodness. I thank him for his mercy. I know I say that all the time, but I never get over the fact about how good God is to me. Amen. Amen. I never get over uh, the fact that God is good. God loves us. Tonight, I want to try to help you from the Word of God. I, it, more, it might be more of an informative message, and uh, it might be more of a uh, something you may have not seen, may have not even realized, uh, but I just want to be a help to you tonight, and I uh, just want to go ahead and throw this out here, uh, so you can have it play around with it, whatever you want to do, but uh, with the Lord's help, we, I, I'm kind of wanting to begin to do a study on Moses, uh, the good leader that he was, and if you know we're going to study Moses, then we're going to have to go to Exodus, but uh, before we start studying Moses, I, I want to kind of give a little uh, intro way, if you will, Brother David, I kind of want to make it to where we understand why things lead up to how they go. Uh, if you got your Bibles, take and turn with me to Genesis chapter number 25. Or chapter 25. Genesis chapter number 45. Genesis chapter number 45. Am I not on? I'm not on over here. Amen. Facebook Live, y'all just missed everything I just said, amen. But it's all right, I think I spoke, I think I was loud enough to where they could still hear me, it probably wasn't clear, but, uh, but Genesis chapter number 45, I'm going to begin reading in verse 25. Uh, we're going to, we all, you know, we know the life of Joseph, if we've been in church any time, but uh, like I say, I just want to give a passageway, if you will, into studying Moses. Uh, I know that we're not going to see Moses' name mentioned here tonight, but this, like I say, it's going to be leading up, if you will. So the Bible says in verse number 25, and they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father. And told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. And he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob their father received. And Israel said, and that's still talking about Jacob right there. And Israel said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. We're going to go to verse number 1 of chapter number 46. And the Bible says, And Israel took his journey with all that he had, and came to Beersheba, and offered sacrifices unto God of his father Isaac. And God spake unto Israel in the visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down to Egypt, 
For I will there make thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into the Egypt, and I will also surely bring thee up again. And Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eyes. And Jacob rose up from Beersheba. And the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father and their little ones and their wives. And the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. I want you to notice that right there. Because when Jacob realized that his son was alive. He realized that that wasn't their wagons. (laughs) He realized that didn't belong to him. He knew it came from somewhere, and he knew that his boys then wasn't lying that Joseph was alive. And they took their cattle and their goods, which they had gotten in the land of Canaan, and came into Egypt, Jacob and all his seed with him, his sons and his sons' sons with him and his daughters and his sons' daughters, and all his seed brought he. With him into Egypt. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you for your word. God, and I just pray tonight, God, that you would multiply. And uh, I pray that your word would multiply in our hearts tonight. And that uh, it would hide within our, and find a lodging place within our heart tonight, God. God, that when we leave here, we leave with something new that we've never known before. And I pray tonight, God, the word of God would impact some lives tonight, God. It's impacted my life surely, and I'm thankful for the word of God. But I pray tonight, God, that you'd help each person represented in this place tonight, God. God, you know what we all stand in need of, and I just thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for this time that you've set aside for us to preach the Word of God. Anoint me the preacher, help them the people, and God will give you the praise, honor, and glory for it all. And it's in Jesus' wonderful name I pray. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Again, I I want to start... With a intro way, if you will, again, into the life of Moses. And I, brother, I got just a hair bit of a squeak. Just a hair. <clears throat> but, brother Van, we realize here, we, we know the story of Joseph, that Joseph was a prisoner and Joseph was a prisoner of Pharaoh, and then eventually Pharaoh's going to make him the second man in charge, the governor of all the land of Egypt. And we come here, and Jacob, he is getting ready to end his life. He's coming down to the latter years of his life. He's fixing to go and die. And, uh, but before that, his sons are going to go, and you know that we know the seven-year famine that's going to happen and take place, and, and his two sons are going to go down to Egypt, and They're going to rekindle a fire back with Joseph and they're going to get some goods back. And, you know, we know the story that goes on here. And then the sons are going to show back up to Jacob and they're going to say, Daddy, Joseph is yet alive. And I can just imagine, Brother Van, I can imagine going down to Egypt and thinking, Bless God, we sold him into slavery. I thought this poor boy would have done been dead. Hey, but you know something? He was doing better off than they were. Hey, friend, can I tell you? Hey, following God and serving God, you end up better than you was when you started. (laughs) Hallelujah, friend. I'm glad one day when I got saved. I'm better now than I once was. I was dead and on my way to hell, but he saved me to the uttermost. Hey, I'm glad I'm not bonded no more. Hey, I'm glad the sun set me free. Amen. Hallelujah you friend when you get saved you're better off when you first started amen Joseph was better off than his brothers and he his brothers came back and you know Joseph was a good steward and he let his brothers take uh, what they came to get and they thought they left with nothing but they were surprised when they got back home amen Uh, because Joseph was good ain't it funny I just got to help somebody out tonight hey if you're a Christian it don't matter if somebody wronged you you better be good to them amen because it pays to be better to somebody than they was to you can I even though they was wrong to you can I tell you that they've got to answer for what they did they've got to they got to put on their pants one leg at a time and it don't matter what they've done you better do better to them than they've done to you amen Because it pays in the end. Well, then they're going to say, Daddy, he's still alive. And and I can just imagine just an old man's presence saying, No, they're not. I can just see it in my head. He said he fainted. I mean, his heart fainted. 
It's like he got, he was a little bit probably upset that they even brought his name up. You know why? He, he's sitting there in old age about to die and he's sitting there saying, probably, why'd y'all even tell me this? Well, then he's going to look outside and he's going to see the wagon sitting there. And then he's going to say, oh, well, now I believe you. Because them, them wagons, you know, that didn't belong to them. It wasn't theirs. This came from somewhere else. And you know something else? Pharaoh was generous enough to let Joseph even think about going and getting them and bringing them to Egypt. I mean, Pharaoh didn't have to, you know, Pharaoh set it up to where Joseph was governor of the land, second in command. Pharaoh didn't say, you know, oh, your family can come. But it was Joseph that pleaded and asked him, said, can they come? I want to be good to them. So they came back and, you know, they, they began to, take all what they had and all they got from Canaan and they took it to Egypt. And tonight, if the Lord would be my help, I kind of want to, again, preach an intro to learning and studying the life of Moses. But before we can study the life of Moses, Sister Wanda, we got to preach on tonight why God's people ended up in Egypt. We got to preach on tonight why God's people even ended up there. Can I tell you something tonight? That God's people ended up in Egypt for a reason. They was there for a reason. It, it was there for them to go to learn growth. It was there for them to go to learn exactly who they was. And, you know, they learned their, you know, how to control themselves. And, but, you know, I can't get too ahead because, you know, we're still going to study it. But, you know, we understand throughout the book of Exodus, the children of Israel are going to drift further and further away from God. And they're going to turn their idols and they're going to turn to their gods of who they want them to be. But would you understand something? tonight that when they went to Egypt they didn't go to Egypt for carnality they didn't go to Egypt brother Van do you know to go down there and worship them false gods and also you know Egypt is a picture of sin we understand that Egypt is a picture of separation from God but do you understand something there was some ratification that happened for them to go to Egypt God commanded Israel to go to Egypt it was God that orchestrated it for them to go they didn't go out of sin. They went out of command. And I, that's one of my points, but I just got to, I'm just, you know, I might be all over the place, but it's all right. Uh, I'm just going to go with the Lord like I did this morning, amen. It's better to go with God than me do it, amen, any day of the week. But can I tell you, they, they went off a command from the Lord. Uh, God has commanded Israel. He's, he, you know, and another thing I want you to realize about the scripture is when Jacob goes and he finds out that Joseph is alive. And another reason why they went to Israel is because one of God's persons was there. Somebody that belonged to God was there and it gave them a reason to go. And another thing, you want to know what was in Egypt? They had their own little property. <laughs> They had their own little designated place that God's already orchestrated and God's already made it safe for them and God's already given them a region all alone by themselves. You know, you know something tonight? Sometimes God brings us to Egypt. God makes us go to Egypt because he's got something in store for us. God's got something in Egypt for us. He's got a, either a person down there, a plan down there. You know, there was a plan for him in Egypt. There was a person down there they had to go back and see, and that was Joseph. There was already, something re there was already a reason for him to go. Because Jacob wanted to see his son before he died. So they fixing to go down there. But you got to notice something. Number one, if you're taking notes... You got to understand, you got to see, number one, the conversation of the sons that they had with the father. The conversation they had, we don't went over there. They had the conversation they talked about, you know, they was down in Egypt. They've seen what they saw. They've seen that Joseph was alive. And now they have this conversation with the father. And then number two, you're going to find the, or the uh, contribution of the father. You're going to find that the father's fixing to contribute something. 
What's he about to contribute? We'll go to verse number 1 of chapter number 46. The Bible says, And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba. Can I tell you something tonight? This was a godly man. This was a man that wanted to know exactly what God wanted for Israel, exactly what God wanted for their life. Because you know something? Half of you tonight, and I'm going to say if I had children myself, I would say if I found out my son was still alive, if I found out my daughter was still alive if I found out one of those things and they've been gone for years if I found out they're still living I promise you my first stop wouldn't be Beersheba my first stop would be Egypt amen because I mean Jacob ain't seen him and he's about to die but he's going to go back to the place that Ahimelech and Abraham made a covenant and you won't know why he (laughs) you won't know why he made you won't know why he went back to where Ahimelech and Abraham made a covenant because he wants to make sure that God's really wanting him to go down there before he goes. He wants to make sure it's all right with his heavenly father. Can I tell you something tonight before we start just acting on things and before we start just meddling in things, before we start going places, we better go back to where God, we meet with God and ask him if it's all right. And you know something? I like what, I just got to keep going with the train we went with this morning. Hey, something that the Bible says right here, Brother Justin, it really helps me. The Bible says, and Israel took his journey with all that he had. Can I tell you, when you go to God, you better take all you got. When you go before a holy thrice God, you better not go with half of your being. You better not just go with a little bit. But I'm telling you, when you go with God, I'm about to jump over this thing. I'm telling you something tonight. When you go with God, you better go all the way. You better, When you go with God, you better take it all with you. You better not half step God. You better not half do God because can I tell you, God will half step you. God will half do you because can I tell you, God wants your all. There's times in your life that God might give you half. He gives you everything he's got with himself. But in return, he's given you all that he has Mm -hmm. because that's who he is. But physical things he might only give you partial. What do you mean tonight? Well, let's go look at a story in Genesis where a woman by the name of Dinah. You know what Jacob did? He went halfway on God. Oh, well, half y'all don't know this, I don't guess. Let's just go over here. Help you out a little bit more. Talking about going halfway with God. The Bible says Jacob took all. You know something? The Bible says in Genesis chapter number 33 that Jacob stopped halfway on God. And you want to know what happened when he stopped halfway on God and built an altar? Even though he built an altar, even though he did godly things, he didn't go exact. God told him to go back to Bethel. But he stopped halfway and he said, I'm going to build an altar right here. He said, this is a safe place. This is all right. But what, com- what comes out of it? His daughter gets abused, gets raped. When you go halfway on God, when you do half for God, there's going to be punishment for it. And I believe here in his latter days, he's coming here in chapter number 46. He's bringing it all to him now. He... He's bringing everything he's got to Beersheba. He goes down there where Ahimelech and Abraham make this covenant. And you know, not only is it a covenant, but it's an oath to the Lord. That was an oath that they made to God. And God made a promise back to them. And he goes to that very place. Can I tell you something tonight? Sometimes you've got to go back to the very place that you made that covenant with God. And you made that bond with God. And you won't know what happened that day, Brother Van, that you made that bond and that covenant with Him. He promised He'd never leave you nor forsake you. 
He promised you He'd be there with you through the thick and through the thin. He promised you that He'd be there if everybody else left you. Can I tell you, Jacob, He's going back to the very place that He's going to go make, you know, He's going to go seek God and He's going to sacrifice burnt offerings to the Lord. He's going to offer sacrifices to Him. And when He's offering those sacrifices, the next thing that you're going to find is God's going to speak. God's going to command. And he's going to say, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, here I am. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down to Egypt. You want to know why? They went to Egypt because God intervened and he spoke and told them to go. But like I said earlier, if this was one of your own, if this was your children, you know, sometimes we got to take off the holy halo for a minute and understand. How many times are we going to go seek God if, you know, if we really ought got to do something? Sometimes we just going to go in action and we going to go do it. No, Jacob knew that he had to go meet with the Lord before because this is a place of ungodly people. But God said, don't fear, it'll be all right. And I like what he says. He says, I'm going to make you a great nation. And everybody takes that out of context, Sister Wanda, and they think that it's a great nation of Canaan land. But it's not. He's talking about making a great nation in Egypt. He's going to make that great nation there where he's going. He said, don't, he said, don't be alarmed. Don't be fear. It's all right. So that's the reason why, that's another reason why God's people had to go to Egypt. Because God said, I'm going to make a great nation down there. You know something? And I like what the Bible says here. He said, and they took stuff that they had with them when they left Canaan. Hey, you know something? They brought some God into, into sin. Amen. They brought some ungodly things. In, or they brought some godly things into the ungodly land. Can I tell you something tonight? We a bunch of Canaan land people and, and we walking out in, a, in an Egypt world hey we need to take some Canaan land out into some Egypt amen because you know why this is a dying world this is a world that's dying and corrupt and going to hell in a handbasket. hey but you know something tonight God said fear don't live in the fear don't live in the spirit of fear but live in the power in the love or live in the I'm trying to get my thoughts together I'm going too fast amen for we don't live in the spirit of fear but we live in the in the in, uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Hallelujah, friend. I, I, it's on the tip of my tongue, amen. We don't live in the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind, amen. Hey, we don't have to live in that fear to go out and know, tell people about Jesus. We don't have to live in that fear. You want to know why? Because he said, fear not. Be of good courage, amen. Hey, can I tell you, he also said that he'll never leave you nor forsake you, amen. And I just got to say that Jacob and his whole family about to take a little bit of God into a whole lot of sin, amen. It just takes a little bit of God to make an impact. Just a little bit of God to make a big impact. But you know something? Joseph been per, doing pretty good down there in Egypt himself, you know. Joseph been down there in Egypt changing some things around. You know, Joseph been down there doing the work of the Lord. He's been, I mean, he'd been doing godly stuff in a sinful world. But you got to understand something. That God's people were in Egypt for a reason. God's people were down there for a reason. That they went because of Joseph. Because God, there was somebody of God there. Not only was it for a reason, but it was for there was a region set up for them. That they'd be all right. You know something? When God sends you places, He's going to prepare the place that you're going to go. Amen. Amen. But you. Oh, God, I'm about to help somebody. You want to know why it ends up turning up and spoil and it gets bad and it rottens and, you know, everything looks bad because we end up getting in it and messing it up. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. God had a designated place for them in the southern parts of Egypt. And they get there and they don't stay long and they end up messing it all up. You know something tonight? I don't want to be part of the messing up crowd. 
I don't want to be part of that crowd that goes into a place that God's already designated for us to be. I don't want to be. I don't want to go to that place where God's already prepared it. And God's already made it, you know, a good, safe, uh, sustaining place to where we'd be all right. And then you walk in it, and the first thing you do is you make it spoil, and you make it bad, and you make it rotten because of some action that you did. That's what they did when they got there, Brother David. Brother Jerry, when they got there, it was all right for a little bit. How do you know they was all right for a little bit? All right, well, let's go over to Exodus chapter number 1, and I'll tell you why it was all right for a little bit. Because the Bible said, hey, can I tell you, God held up to his covenant with Jacob. God held up to that. How do you know that? Because the Bible says in verse number 7 of chapter number 1, and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Hey, when they got to Egypt, when God's people got to Egypt, Egypt, brother David. The Bible said they increased. How do you know they was in Egypt? We'll go back to number chapter number one and verse number one. And these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Hey, they crossed over. They crossed over from Canaan into Egypt and they went and they got there and what happened? They multiplied. They increased. You want to know why? God had a plan for the people of Egypt. God had that plan for them. It was a purpose for them to be there. God had a place set aside for them. And the thing is, is when they got there, they increased. They did exactly what God said they was going to do. So why do we have trust issues when God tells us to go somewhere? Why, do we, why is our trust issues kind of wearisome when God says, fear not? It's all right to go down to Egypt. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to do great things for you. He's already saying right there, I've already got it planned out. (laughs) Just as soon as God tells Jacob that I'm going to make you a great nation, that just implies into my head, he's already got a plan. (laughs) He's already got something working out. I mean, I mean... I, I just I, I just don't that that's just what I, I interpret when I read God saying I already got this. Go down there when you show up, you go multiply, you go increase, you gonna be a great nation. And then what's God's people do? Turn it upside down. What? A, oh, y'all missed that part. I didn't say what the world did. I didn't say what society does. I didn't say what the government does. I said what God's people do. What do you mean? God's people fits in with society. I'm going to preach for a minute if that's all right. God's people like to fit in with the government. God's people want to fit in with the world. And they want to, you know, it's all right. The world does it, so I'm going to do it. Government says it's okay, so I'm going to do it. Society says it's cool, so I'm going to make it cool. That's what God's people did. You want to know why people ain't in church? God's people. Amen. What do you mean, preacher? If God's people going to bash the church, why is the world going to go to a place that God's people's bashing it? I'm telling you. The reason why churches ain't full tonight is because of God's people. It's not because the world. It's not because society. Even though society gives us a bad rap, even though the world gives us a bad rap, but where did it start? God's people. God's people give them own selves their own reputation. But tonight, why don't we make a new reputation? Why don't we start a new trend around here of making a new reputation for God? Standing for Christ, even though we already do it. But my thing is, the haters going to hate. But the thing is, what are we going to do not to make us feel like we so down and out and get so upset when people bash the church and don't want to come? 
We've got to realize tonight it was because of us. The church is the one that's made the rap for the church of who they are. It's the ch- I know people don't like to hear that. It ain't just, preacher, the church didn't do it. Sure they did. Sure they did. How? You go ask one person why they left the church and they'll say because. That member you got drinks on Saturday night. And sing in the choir Sunday morning. Oh. Go to somebody and say, well, preacher, that person in your congregation, all they do is run their mouth. And I ain't going to go to a church where all I hear is bad drama. Where did it start? The church. God's people. God's people. I got to say this. And I'm not going to hold back one ounce of an apology. You better watch out what you do when it comes to sin. Because it will catch you. It will show you. And you know something? There's been too many people. Too, I, I'm not talking about sinners. Because sinners don't know. They ain't saved. I'm talking about born again children of God. And they let one sin entice them to do it. And their testimony goes straight downhill. Why? Because they wasn't careful. They wasn't cautious. And Brother Van, you know, they probably didn't even think about Christ. Because normally when you sin, you ain't thinking about Jesus. How'd you get from God's people going to Egypt all the way to sin? Because it's God's people that turned Egypt upside down. But they went there because God had a plan for them. You won't know what I believe God's plan was, Sister Wanda, for them to go to Egypt to make an impact. For them to go to Egypt to make a difference. For them to go to Egypt and turn Egypt into Canaan land. Well, how are they going to do that? Get Christians that love the Lord? You can turn Egypt into Canaan land where you just came from. You know something? Everybody dogs this world that the world's so bad, which it is. But do you not think that you can turn the world into the church? Because we are the church. Amen. And you, get, you see more converts get saved? <laughs> you see the world start turning into the church. <laughs> Man, I, I'll preach my own preaching. Amen, preacher. Because God had a purpose for him to go to Egypt. And tonight, like I said, this is an intro into the study of Moses because then we're going to go into the leadership of Moses. And we're going to see that Moses is going to go in. And i got to say this. I applaud that man. I applaud that man. Why? Because he could have given up. I'm talking about a man who feared the Lord. I'm talking about a man who was not scared. You know something? They could have killed him when he said, I'm not going to be related to Pharaoh's daughters. (laughs) They could have killed that man. But he stood with it in confidence. Wait, where are you going with that? Well, we'll study that. But you do realize that they hid Moses for months. And it was Pharaoh's daughters that took him in. You're talking about a man that was raised by sin, by the Egyptians, ones that didn't know God. That's the grace of God, friend. That's that's telling me that it don't matter if you grow up in a sin-filled home, God can still touch you. 
It don't matter if you're covered in sin, God can come by you. I ain't even, I ain't even trying to preach this, but I got to tell you, it don't matter how you was raised, God can still use you. God can still touch you. God can still save you. And I'm thankful tonight that God sent his people to Egypt. Because you're going to get a good leader out of Egypt. As they come tonight.